Welcome to Heath Riles Barbecue. On today's episode of Shooting the Q, we're going to be cooking Wagyu tri-tip from our good friend Kevin Green at the butcher shop in Pensacola, Florida. If you haven't got any meat from Kevin, you're missing out because this Wagyu is some of the best you can have. I absolutely love it. This is from Australia here. It's got a score of eight on the scale. It's absolutely great. I'm going to be cooking on my Goldman's cast iron cooker made in Georgia. It's a Kamada style grill that cooks absolutely fantastic. We're going to be seasoning everything up with our simple citrus and our beef rub today. Let's get started. All right, we've got our tri-tips out of the pack. We've got them dried off and we trimmed a little bit of the sinew off of it, a little bit of the fat that I didn't think that was going to render. Now, the only thing that you have to watch for with a tri-tip is the way that the grains run. And so on the long part here, the tail shaft, the grain is running where you can slice it like this. Well, when it gets down here and starts coming up into the, what I'll call the T part, it, the grain starts turning. So you have to position your knife a different way. And you'll be able to see once it's cooked to cut against the grain. So the first thing I wanna do is take some of my simple citrus rub, which is basically an AP rub. It's salt, pepper, garlic, onion powder, a few other things with lemon and citrus added to it. I want to draw a little bit of that moisture out of this and let's kind of get a wet brine going on right now. I'm going to let this set on my cutting board and hang out for about 20 to 30 minutes while my grill comes up to the tip where I want it at before I season it with my beef rub and we'll get it on. Alright, today we want to go ahead and get our Golden's cast iron cooker fired up with our Royal Oak charcoal. Now to talk a little bit about this Golden's cast iron cooker, it's made in Georgia at a foundry and it's 100% American made. It's a great grill, it's never gonna break and even comes with cast iron grates. It makes a perfect lifetime grill. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get the lid raised here and I've already got the racks out. Go ahead and get some charcoal in. If you hadn't seen these tumbleweeds right here, they're perfect for lighting a fire. I always take a couple of them put in a couple different spots. Now that we've got our fire lit here and it's been burning for about seven or eight minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and put in a couple chunks of pecan wood here. And I'm just gonna kinda put them off to the side. I'm gonna go ahead and get my place setter in here which is made out of cast iron. You want to make sure you center it up where you kind of got the same amount of gap on each side. And I'm going to go ahead and get my racks in here. Now, the reason I'm doing that, we're going to be reverse searing this tri-tip today. I'm going to put it on. It's going to cook somewhere around 250, 275 degrees till it reaches internal temp of around 110. I'm going to then pull my grates off, pull my heat deflector out, crank the grill as wide open as it'll go, and sear this tri-tip off. It's gonna be absolutely delicious. Now that our tri-tip has been sitting here about 20 minutes, you can see how it started to sweat really good. I wanna go ahead and get a good coating in my beef rub on it and get it on my Goldman's cast iron cooker for that reverse sear. Now this has got a lot of salt, black pepper, garlic, a little bit of red pepper. I mean, it's gonna bring the heat to this, but it can take salt and it can take heat because this is such a big piece of meat. Now, once we get that seasoned up and pat it in, it's go time. Let's get it on the grill. All right, I've got my grill stabilized about 280 degrees, which is fine. It's gonna fluctuate a little bit, of course, when I open the lid. So I wanna go ahead and I wanna get my tri-tip on. And even though I'm using the place setter in it, you're still going to hear a little bit of sizzle. I'm going to bunch this up just a little bit. Now, the one thing that I want to do while I'm getting this on is get a chef's alarm in it from Thermaworks here. I'm going to go ahead and put it in a smaller one. Now I'm at about 49 and a half degrees. I just want to get my grill lid shut and let it get some good pecan smoke and that roll oak charcoal from that hardwood flavoring going on. Get my vent cracked back to a little less than halfway and let it go till it hits 110 degrees.
All right, you can hear our alarm going off. Our tri-tip has already hit 110 degrees. Now, they didn't stay on the grill, but for about 35 minutes, which is not really long because these tri-tips were only about two and a half pounds a piece. Your normal big tri-tips you're gonna get in prime and all that's gonna be about three and a half, four pounds a piece normally. So I'm gonna go ahead, get them took up, and laid on my plate here. Now, the next thing I wanna do is get my place setter out of here. I'm gonna take my tool that come with the Golden's cast iron cooker. You wanna make sure you don't set it right here on the edge either, because it will melt it. Now you stick it right in here like that, and make sure you don't touch this thing, folks, because it's hot. Now I'm gonna go ahead and clean my grates up here and get them ready to cook again. Now that our grill's up to temp here, we wanna go ahead and get our tri-tips back on to sear them off. It's sitting at about 470 degrees. It's steady climbing. I'm gonna go ahead and get them on and just keep cooking them like a steak till they get done. You wanna keep spinning them and flipping them. Get some char on them. I'm not trying to get the perfect grill marks because I like some char on the outside of my tri-tip. Let's get going. Listen to that sizzle. Now that our tri-tip is off of our Golden's cast iron cooker, they've rested for about 15 minutes. We're getting ready to slice into them. So just to recap, we got two tri-tips from our buddy Kevin Green down at the butcher shop in Pensacola, Florida. They weighed an average of about two and a half pounds a piece because the pack was a little over five pounds. All we did was take them out, kind of done a little bit of a wet brine with, or dry brine anyway, with a little bit of our simple citrus rub. It turned it really wet brought a lot of the moisture out of it. We seasoned it up with some of our beef rub. We put our place setter, our heat diverter, as you would call it, on our Golden's cast iron cooker running about 275 degrees. We put these on, cook them to 110. We then pulled them off, pulled the heat diverter out, cranked the heat up to about 450 degrees, and we started just turning them and turning them and flipping them and spinning them until they reached about 128 degrees and we pulled them off. Now that they've rested, it's the moment of truth. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to tear into them. It's always gonna be a little more done out toward the edges on those fine edges. And I'm gonna slice this kind of thin. And it's gonna be great and tender. This is gonna be a great cut of beef here. Had good rest time. And let's look at that. Oh man. Turn it around here where you can see it. I'm gonna take one of these center pieces here and look at that. The moisture is there, everything is there. Now, I'm gonna cut me a small piece of this right here to try. The flavor is incredible from that Wagyu tri-tip. I'm gonna take this, make a creamy horseradish, and I think I'm going to make me a real good French dip out of it. I don't know about you, but that's the way I like to eat them. If you like what we're doing on our channel, be sure to like and subscribe. Tell all your friends and share it. We're going to keep putting out weekly recipes and videos. Thanks for watching.